Hello YouTube, I have a little bit different of a video today. Um, instead of you doing my usual review of brushes, I'm going to be doing a type of tutorial video about um, brushes that are a little bit more unusual. So uh, in the title card, you can see I called them doe foot brushes or angled blending brushes. And those are pretty accurate descriptions for this shape of brush. So they're kind of shaped like a doe foot applicator, like the ones you would find in lip gloss or um, liquid lipstick. So hence I called it doe foot. I've also seen these referred to as angled blending brushes, they're eye brushes. They're round and they're angled. So there's a lot of confusion about how to use these brushes. I often get asked about them. So I thought I'd do an educational video on them today. So, before I get to using them, and I will demonstrate with this Hakuhodo brush on my eyelid. This is Canadian Squirrel. This one is by a Chinese brand makeup cat made of pine squirrel. I prefer this brush by Hakuhodo because of the size of it and the steeper angle of it. And I'll be using it to apply my eye makeup. So bear with me while I apply the rest of my face makeup first. So a little bit about how the angled blending brush is used can be explained by how an angled face brush is used. So I'll kind of build the foundation on how to use this angled eye blending brush after I explain how an angled face brush should be used. So it's gonna take me a couple minutes to apply my foundation and stuff. Hopefully that doesn't turn too many of you off. And then I'll get started on the main meat of the video. So as far as the angled blending brushes go, they're rare, but not uncommon. I've seen them from other brands before. Um, I think Sigma has them. You find them in those like 20 brush makeup sets, makeup brush sets usually. And then they tend to be misunderstood or underused. And they are actually really great tools for applying a wash of um, eye color to contour the eye socket really quickly. And they're especially good if you like doing natural makeup. So this is a Chik uh, Chikuhodo Takumi T3. I've shown this before in my videos. This is a round Saikoho Goat uh, foundation blending brush. And if you want to see or know more about it, you can check out my Takumi overview, my Takumi series overview. Talk about it more in depth. I'm just using this because this is my foundation brush of choice for the week. Just doing a little bit to even out skin tone. And I'm also going to go in with just a little bit of concealer for some spots. I'm sure it's a stressful time for everybody. So thank you for being here and taking some time off to relax a bit by enjoying something that you love, which is makeup and beauty. Okay. So I've got a little bit of a tan, which means I'm gonna go in with a little bit of bronzer. So typically I would use an angled face brush for a bronzer, but because I intend to use this angled face brush to explain how to use the angled eye brush, I'm going to be using this Homare um, KZ2 cheek brush to powder my face with bronzer. So again, if you want to know more about this brush, you can check out the dedicated video I have to the Homare series or Honor series. This is the Kazan Squirrel new release from Chikoto. I'm going to use it right over all the places to give myself a little bit of a tan and I'm using a mini of the Laguna Bronzer by NARS. Just give my face a little bit more color so it kind of almost gets close to matching my shoulder, not quite. Okay, so angled brush and angled eye brush, angled face brush and angled eye brush. They're both kind of built on the same principles where one side is shorter and thus denser and then one side is longer and less 
fluffier and looser. So obviously the denser side will apply color more strongly and be stronger at blending, while the loose fluffy side has less strength. So if I were to dip this evenly into a pan of color, I would end up with the most pigmentation and color pigments picked up here less so here and if I apply it to my cheek that's what I will end up with more pigmentation from the shorter end and less pigmentation from the longer end. So what that translates into is an ombre. So if I put this flat into a pan of powder and then apply it to my cheek vertically like this it results in an ombre. So this is one way to use it vertically and going down like this or going up like this if you're applying blush. So if I'm applying blush, typically I'll put it in a pan and then apply it this way and then kind of almost like stipple and sweep my way up. If I'm applying contour with it, which I might as well do, so I'm going to use the same bronzer. I'm going to contour it with it a bit, bronzer. So I'm loading it up. As you can see, there's much more pigment down at the short end and less at the top end. If I put it here like this and apply it, most of the color is already deposited here. And as I sweep it through, so this is how the brush is oriented. I turn it, put it down, and then sweep it. And that gives me a bit of definition. And now to even out the other side real quick. So the short dense part places the pigment and all the following bristles uh, blend it out. So that's one way to use a face blending brush, and that is also applicable to how to use an angled eye blending brush or a doe foot brush. So what that looks like on the eye is if I take this brush, this Hakuhodo Canadian Squirrel doe foot brush, and put it into a pan of powder. This is Rosewood by Burberry. I'll put it on the outside corner like this with the long end of the bristles pointing out and then drag it in. And that creates a nice gradual fade because most of the color is already here and then brought in. So this is useful if you like doing the horizontal style of makeup where you like the darkest part on the outside and then gradually getting lighter on the inside. So if you like that type of makeup, this brush is great for that because it applies a wash without you really having to do anything. So the other way to use an angle brush is vertically, like I mentioned before. So if I tap this in my blush, you see again that there's more pigment down here, less up here. When I apply that to my cheeks, that means I get kind of like an ombre blush effect where I get less color here and more color here. So the more color translates to looking darker. So it's kind of an optical illusion where it looks darker down here and lighter up here and that creates definition. And then that's another principle for the that applies to the angled eye brush. And this is going to look a bit wonky because it's going to be different on both eyes. I'll just even it out after video's done. So previously I had taken the brush on this eye. I'd taken it this way, turned it so it was like this and flipped it over and applied it like that. So that was how it was done on this eye. And that would be the same as when I contoured with my brush, sweeping it down. Now I'm going to do the vertical alignment like this and then show you what that looks like on the eye. I suppose it would have been better to do this with a darker shadow, but hey, regrets. So I take it like this. I put the short part where it will be the most dense on the lash line. And then I let the long bristles deposit a lighter wash of color. So then it's kind of like a ombre darkest at the lash line and then lighter as you get towards the crease or the brow bone. So as you can see, darker here, lighter here, and you can just see the tail end of it here where this brush uh, swept across. So when I do this, I'm just sweeping it across back and forth. Well, if I was doing it like this, 
I would be sweeping in one direction. I go across, pick it up, go across, pick it up, and put it back down. So the effect it would be definitely more evident with a darker eyeshadow. But this is what I have for how to use this brush. So, so let's let's say this is a monolid, and then this is the eye brush. So I would turn it like this, and I would place it on the outside, and then sweep it across to apply eyeshadow. I don't think this is, this is not makeup paper, so I'm not sure it's going to take makeup, but hey, let's see if it'll do it anyways. So let's see if I can apply makeup to this. Okay, disappointment. As, but anyways, so bigger model of the eye. You apply it like this, pick it up, go across, pick it up, go across, pick it up, and keep going until you're satisfied with the blend job. If you have a double lid and if you have um, a prominent orbital socket and you have a crease, so pretend this is the crease. I don't have that crease, so I apply with the brush like this, the long side pointing up and the short side down towards the lash line. And I contour my eye socket that way. However, if you have a prominent crease here, you would do the opposite. And you wanted to like define that crease a little bit more, you would flip it upside down instead. So that the long, um, the long bristles are kind of going into your crease, like jab it into your crease like that. And then the short bristles would contour this and give your eyes more depth. So you can kind of see, even though I don't have that orbital crease, how when I stick this into here, if you just imagine where the dark color would be placed right under my brow bone, that would kind of hollow it out and give it a rounder appearing eye. So let's just try it. Not expecting great results from this because it's not my look but you can see how it kind of takes shape. It doesn't look natural on me because that's not how my eye socket normally is. But you can see how I carved out that eye socket by using the brush this way, upside down, versus how I defined my eye differently this way by flipping it like this with the short side down towards the lash line. So short side down towards the lash line, you get this kind of like almost like a shadow cat eye. And of course I would take another brush and blend that out a little bit more. Or if you do it short side up, stick into the socket, you get um, a much bigger rounder looking eye like this. So that's pretty much it. And what um, that's pretty much all I have for this video. It's just a short how to, and then the last technique, of course, was starting on the outside and then putting it on and then going in. So these techniques can be combined. So as you can see, like this one has really defined my eye. So I kind of like drew a big socket on and then now I'm defining the outer crease a bit. And then like this is a good one to make a halo eye because it already has kind of given me that halo. And if I wanted to make it pop even more, I would just take a highlighter color and pop it onto the lid. Okay. What I would not use these brushes for is I would not use these for contouring the nose because you end up with, as you can see from here, you end up with kind of this, I wouldn't call it a harsh line, but you definitely end up with an edge. On the eye, you can totally take another um, blending brush and well, blend this down. So I'm gonna do it with this other one right here, right now. Totally easy to blend down. However, down the nose, you have less wiggle room. So if you're gonna be contouring the nose, I wouldn't use this brush because it has pretty blunted edges. It doesn't have that nice round taper like something like this would if it was in, if pretend this is in an angled uh, shape. Like this has nice rounded edges, so it would blend your nose contour nicely. Nor would I use this for like cheek contour because it'll look end up looking pretty harsh. Why it works for the eye is because, well, normally you have some other brushes that you're going to go over with different colors. 
but also because you have more leeway of the eye. So like, let's say I go back, apply this way again. I'm gonna give myself the harsh edge back. Okay, harsh edge, right? I'm gonna take this brush, clean out a bit of towel, remove as much pigment as I can, and just tap it on with the blunt, with the blunt, with the short side on the outside, and then just move it in small circular motions, and then that just blends it out right away. Doesn't work so well for the nose. Not sure why. Maybe it's powder formulation. It just doesn't work as well. So that's how you use these angled eye brushes and um, also known as doe foot brushes. And that was also kind of a crash course on how you use an angle face brush. So thank you for watching and I hope you learned something useful. Bye.